good, everybody? It's your boy DK, and we are back with another episode of Rude Love. So you already know I got my boy with me, Cash. Man, what can I say, man? Glad to be back, man. Yeah. Glad to be back. That's what's up, bro. So yeah, man, you know, um, I drove all the way down from, you know, we in AZ right now, we in uh, Phoenix. Drove all the way. to be exact for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean? drove all the way from Vancouver. So I'm glad to be here. You know what I'm saying? Kicking it with the homies. Yeah. No, nah, man, it's a vibe. It's definitely a vibe. I'm glad to have you down, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, uh, last was it last night we were watching the Dave Chappelle thing? We was watching Chris Rock. Uh, we was watching oh, Chris, Chris Rock, right? Yeah, right, right. we were watching Chris Rock. Um, it was last night, man. We were, we were checking him out. It was it was kind of crazy. He it was a, it was a good stand up. I wouldn't say it's on the level of Dave Chappelle's, but he made some really interesting points. I thought it was it was pretty dope. Mm-hmm. What uh what stood out to you? I mean, all of it. Obviously, the joke about Will Smith, but even that contained a lot of like real things as was to be said. You know, when he was even speaking about um the August Alcina situation, right? Like, you know, uh. How how she humiliated him by sitting him at the fucking round table mm-hmm. and telling him she was you know had an entanglement really fucking yeah you know, she, she did him. yeah so I just thought yeah that was that was, that was pretty funny I thought uh, when he talked about the attention and what people are dying for I thought he was gonna say opioids which he did say opioids but he said attention was the most dangerous drug right which yeah which is real exactly yeah absolutely I believe it. Um, you know, uh, as, especially as it relates to relationships. I mean, we, we've talked about that before as far as Absolutely. like, you know, if you're addicted to attention and you can't, your partner doesn't satisfy that like aspect of attention, then, you know, I feel like the relationship is doomed because you always got to look outside of the relationship, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It was, yeah, I just, I thought it was interesting though, just because, um, I think a lot of people uh, that claim to be woke was hit with the truth, you know? And I mean, when I say the truth, I meant like just real actuality, things are actually happening. You know, um, we always want to look at other people and say that couldn't be us. Or that wouldn't be me, right? Mm. But then we, we show signs of it happening in our life too. Mm, right? True. So that's, that's why I thought it, it was like one of those gut-wrenching things because he was saying things that we all day to day do Right. Basically calling out all the hypocritical and, and all that hypocrisy within not just entertainment but in the world, the individuals. Right. You know, um That's what I really liked. I, that's yeah. what I personally thought it was like a really good because people were saying that it was like one of his best ones or just one of the best ones in general. And I feel like the reason why is because what he you know was speaking on was so applicable, right? Like yeah. even like cause there was a part where he was talking about what was he talking about? He was saying, um how do you get oh how do you become famous or yeah yeah four re- four ways that you could become fam- like yeah to get attention right right to get the most attention and the first one was like show, show your ass. ass that to me was like yeah, that's <clears throat> i really wondered if if women took us like women who watched that took a second and realized what they're doing because I mean, like they know what they're doing, but at the same time, it's do you just really like, know what you're doing? Like, what the effects of what you're doing? Do you understand the ramifications of you doing this? Right. And what does it say, maybe, about you and your character moving forward? You know what I'm saying? Because we're so desensitized to it at this point. Like it's almost like you can almost expect to see a girl in a bikini, and you could expect to go on her IG and be like, "All right, yeah. like, I, like I want to know what this girl's body looks like. <laughs> like I just need to go to her IG," which is kind of like crazy when you think it's about like it. soft porn it, it like really when he when, when he really said it i really thought about it because i'm like yo showing your ass like that's i mean we wear clothes for a reason we're civilized people for a reason but now we're showing our ass like do you yeah, know what i mean 100 like, percent. but i also it's one of those things too where you look at it and you realize that um these women and i don't want to say these women because it sounds like i'm generalizing but a lot of women um that i've seen that come across on ig it's back to the first thing. What is the 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 whole purpose of it? It's attention, right? Right. So as much as you want to say, oh, I'm about a dollar, or I'm about this, or I'm about that, it goes right back to the first thing he said, which is attention and how you can garnish that. And he said, ask the way you keep it. And I think he, you know, it was dope because I think he even said, 
that OnlyFans, he actually would allow OnlyFans because they're actually making money off of it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, but if you just, you know, you're just a student or like a nurse or something like that, and you're out here showing your ass, like, does it really, like, are, are you benefiting from it really aside from attention, right? So it's like, of course, uh, yeah, attention. But I mean, what is it worth? I mean, that's what I was, I guess, I guess that was a bit of my whole spin off, right? It's like, what is it worth, right? When I say what is it worth, I don't mean the dollar value, I mean the, the value that actually is against you, the thing that actually is against you, not the value, but the actual, like that, that when you do that, you're sacrificing. So everything's give and take. The whole universe is give and take, right? So yeah, you make the money, but what are you sacrificing to get the money, right? Like a lot of these women, I don't, you know, there's a whole lot of OnlyFans women I've seen kill themselves in the last little bit too, like suicides. Okay. A few, right? So in exchange for the attention and the money, that's how I guess I look at it and weigh everything up. Like, what is the sacrifice? What is the risk? And what is the reward? Right, of course. Right, you have to look at it that way. But no, that's what I'm saying. I feel like this doctor, that him doing the stand up, was really like it was a it was a check because it shows you that we're on autopilot. Right, right? we're not measuring the what this the outlook is going to be like. What is it? What is the future going to look like? We're not measuring that up no more. These women aren't even measuring that. And you're hearing women just like. The, the porn stars that come forward in interviews years later and say, yo, I turned my life over to God and da 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 da. It's because you were never measuring what the cost of this, this action was going to be. And that now we're in the age where it's forever. As much as we want to say nothing's forever, these pictures, this footage, if I own it, it's forever. So do you think that, let's just think about, like, let's just say a, a, a Let's just say there's a girl that you would date and currently right now she's online showing her ass, showing her titties, all that kind of stuff, right? Maybe even doing only fans. But you find her, you decide this is a girl for you, you end up wifing her, um, and you're saying that this content is forever. So where do you see there being um, you know, issues with that? Okay. Well it's depending on how big the chick got, right? So Let's just say you you got one that was like a medium on the fans chick. She got like four hundred thousand people, right? So you know these dudes is DMing, they're DMing back. Ooh, right. I'm saying when she decides to put this way of life down, that somebody has footage of my woman out here. Okay, so right, so it's forever because these images are sketched forever. These images are on platforms that's uploaded to a cloud. That's forever. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? What's the first thing they do when they see you want to make a change? What's most things, what's the, our publications, what do they do when they see you make a change? They always update people on your past life. So all of these women who have only fans, we're going to be updated on your past life at some point if you were, if you made it up the ranks high enough, right? And even if you did make it up the ranks high enough, the Google searches is real. Oh yeah, I mean everything that's on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like everything that's on OnlyFans can be found. Everything that's on OnlyFans can be found basically for free on like right. Reddit. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's crazy to me, right? Yeah. So I mean, that's why I say forever. Like, I want to know that this person's changed, and now I got to go back and deal with the past, even though we're trying to head to the future. Right. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, so basically, like the internet, you you can't actually leave that moment in the past because you would say that you know when you meet somebody okay their past is their past right but not in this but time. not not in this time <laughs> not like your past it lives on okay fair enough that's what's up so well yeah i think i think it's i think it, you're right like it's tough it's tough for women because um you know we just had women's day international women's day right shout, shout out to the women up shout out, out to all y'all um yeah and, and, and the liberation of women is, is has been so it's been so um, eye-opening for, for everybody, for men too, right? Because we we don't really look at our misogynistic ways all the time. We just are in it, right? Like men don't act misogynistic. They are misogynistic. You know what I'm saying? So that, it's not like an act we got to put on when we get around our boys. No, we always just look at it like we can and they can't, right? In a lot of ways. So it makes women feel like they need to have their voice and rally behind a cause that 
allows them to be free of speech, um, free of free of any guilt that has to do with them expressing their sexuality. Right. You know. Um, so I guess the question is always: Is are men and women equal after Women's Day? You gotta you gotta ask yourself. I mean, is there a Men's Day? No, there isn't. Women would say it's a man's, it's a man's world, world. Right? right? And it's and, and it's Men's Day every single day. Um, I would beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think it's men's day every single day. I think that men are willing to control and kill to make it their way every single day. But I don't think it is their way because we have all propped up to do what we need to do to get vagina. So we say we're equal. I mean, men are hunters. We're hunting the vagina most of the time. Hundred percent. They. I mean, women are. They're the prize, right? Like at the end of the day, they say that women are built or, or women are born with their value. Men have to earn their value, right? Over time. That's deep. That's deep. That's yeah. Deep. That's super deep. Right? So, I mean, how do you feel about that statement? Because clearly that's an imbalance. Like men and women are not equal in that sense. So where are we at in, in like, you know, at this point, I would say that women have access to a lot of the things that men do at this point, like a lot of women are high, high, high earners. I think like, they have access to more. And, and, and when I say access to more, it's not that like men are going to ever give women an equal seat. Women are, men are never going to give women an equal seat at the table consciously, but subconsciously they will. Right. So it is up to a woman to play the cards right, to put herself in a position where she can sit at that same table and end and a man not have a problem with her adding value. Women proposition themselves differently than men. So that imbalance, it, when we say equal, I don't believe we'll ever be equal. I believe that we only can balance each other, right? So a man not being able to do certain things or get command certain attention, you need a woman for that. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah. you, you hear the balance. So yeah, you may not, you know, as an, in mass, might not be able to... Um, you know, do every single thing that a man do, but in reality of it is, you're able to use, uh, you're able to study men and use what you have to get a seat at the table. A man could never do that. He can never use what he has to get a seat at the table. He would actually have to show up to the table with something mm -hmm. tangible, right? Not anything that you know, a feeling, or I got a feeling that I'm this, or I got a feeling that I'm that. It's like nah. You either bring a bread, ketchup, something to the table. Because if you don't, a woman can sit down at the table and just her presence at the table adds value. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, I like what you said before about, you know, men are, they're not acting misogynistic, that we are misogynistic. It kind of immediately reminded me of like the topic of race. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, just because like clearly, you know, to people like we're black, so we're at the bottom of the racial yeah. like ladder. You know what I'm saying in terms of like privilege and these types of things. So, um, like I can understand what it's like being black, but I can't understand what it's like being a woman. But when I compare the two, I mean, it mm. kind of it kind of makes a little bit more sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you'll never be able to walk in that the shoes or other. Mm -hmm. um, so like, so with that being said, it's kind of like okay, like you know. Um, do women feel the same way that, say, a black man feels in in the workforce? Basically, what do you think about that? No, I think I think you got a vagina. Things are just different. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think so. So, so you, we so just you, instantly have we have it's instantly sympathy for the vagina. It's instantly right. Workplace or not, if a woman is crying in the workplace. It's just different. If a man's crying in the workplace, it's just different, right? I've had, I've seen women, and I've worked in corporate before, so I've seen women like have breakdowns, right? Okay. And people come to her aid and get her back together so she can go back to work and do her, her job. So, so do you think that, and do you think that the glass ceiling is higher for women um, than it is for a black person or a black man? And then also, how do we how do we view black women or colored women in that space in terms of equality? Like, is it still is it still bad? Because I mean, at the, the reason why I ask this is because we're at a day and age when anything that 
could offend somebody will be called out immediately. And it's, you know what I mean? Like yeah, anybody. Yeah, yeah. So if that's the case, then you would think that everybody is, should be equal. Like the, the playing field should be equal. Or is it that there's like people still feel that way undercover? Like you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, you know, same topic, but you gotta ask yourself, it all comes down to what the agenda is, right? Right, we gotta remember what the feminist movement really was and what it is, right? Now, it might be something different to the, the woman that's just sitting at home, but as in the whole in the organization, it was meant to prop women up and take them out of a household, right? Because we they knew that the household wouldn't function properly without the woman tending to the household. And it's not just about the cleaning and cooking, it's the whole vibe of uh, uh, a woman making a house a home. So when you have women that go mass into the workforce, and you know, again, my mother was one of them, what does it do? So I look at it as what is the agenda? Um, yes, men hold more power, but women have been propped up to have more power for a reason. And not necessarily just because they earn it. That's the agenda, right? So yes, there are women that work harder than men, that are smarter than men, um, but what do you think affirmative action came from? Right, it was to help white women, but initially the way they propped it was for what? For you to have a leg up and have an equal chance to have a position of power in a place that you may not occupy predominantly with your color. So now what does that do? It puts women in a place of thinking that they've earned things that they might not even earn based on an agenda, right? And again, this is not to say that women are qualified. Women, there's a lot of women I know. I, I actually like working with women a lot of time over men, right? Same. Right? Uh, but to say that in these companies that they weren't propped up or they weren't, this whole thing wasn't based on an agenda would be a lie. You know what I'm saying? Because if that's the case, you would never, it would never be a server of you having to put that you're alone. Right, we have to automatically take that into account, but that's so we're no longer even on an equal playing field. If we gotta put in all these other factors, we're just not. It's either we're equal or we're not equal. It doesn't matter if you're a black woman, white woman. If you're equal, you're equal. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how I look at it. We're not equal though, and and we're not equal because again, we have to weaken, we have to weaken and fuck up the system. You know what I'm saying? This is what it is. We have to fuck up the system. If you don't fuck up the system, then what do you have? You have people that are lining with different purposes. The women right now that don't even want to have kids, which is fine. But what would that, if 20 years ago, that was never acceptable. A woman said she never wanted to have kids. It would never be acceptable, right? That was acceptable for her to work 80 hours now, though. That's acceptable. So you just got to look at that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, in lure of all the women that want to go to go on to the workforce and earn what men earn, I think that's I think that's the dopest thing to have an opportunity, but never forget that a man gave you that opportunity. That's the part, right? All this shit I said, cool, but that's the part we gotta focus on. Who gave you the opportunity to make more? And what was his point of doing so? Because when have men have ever been fair with anybody in the whole world, in the history? Where have men been fair with men? Let alone be fair with women, so what's the play behind that? They rape pillaged countries for centuries and decades. What 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 plan is being implemented right now with giving women? Because again, you would have to give the power. Women think they earn the power. It had to be given to you if somebody was occupying that space. Who decided for you to, to now get in that space? And I've never met a man who's just giving away free power. Never without a plan of ruling in the back room. Okay, got you, got you. Yeah, so I mean like, um, so I would guess, I guess that like, you know, I, it is similar to how I feel about race in, in, in business and that, that the imbalance still exists. Um, and a lot of time, it's basically a pity, like it's a pity or like, you know, it's, they're trying to save face or put on a certain, like um image as a company or they have certain like criteria that they need to make so they put these women in places of power same way that they put black people in um these places and i definitely think that it's like there's an actual word there's a term for it it's called control opposition 
Right, no, but th- but there's an actual term I'm looking for that that really like describes um, sort of what this is, and I can't remember what it is right now, but it's fine. We'll um, yeah, we'll keep moving. But um, it seems like control opposition to me, right? Which I mean, it's just been the switch and bait game of the world, right? You you put somebody in power that you can champion. Um, while while establishing a message while you do that to the rest of the world. But that again is usually a problem. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I think women women themselves have, have become more educated, um, all those things to give to an establishment instead of giving to a family. Right. You know, because once you once you end the eighty hours a week and you big CEO status or whatever high position you may have, those hours aren't going into your household. Those hours aren't going into the thought process of making sure that the family is afloat emotionally, all the things that naturally women bring to the table, those things aren't being implemented into the home. So where are those, where is that energy going? That's why I call them work moms, work wives, because you're actually in the workplace performing duties that you would be at work that you should be doing at home, but you're having a home life. So. True, true. Do so you, do you feel like men and women are equal? Um, no, I don't think men and women are equal. Why, why not? Um, I don't think men and women are equal because um, I think that, number one, like, uh, emotionally, there's a, there's a difference emotionally, right? Like, men tend to be a lot less emotional and they bring less emotion to the actions that they do all the way from doing business all the way to having sex you know Mm. what i'm saying so there's just a lack of emotion there right and so that that in itself it it you know they have to be judged different right they have they have to be judged different because you know if i'm going i can't judge a woman um purely on her either her ability to to be decisive in business situations if she's naturally bringing her own um, emotions into it, right? So how do, how do you think some of these women do it that are like big CEOs or CFOs or, you know, uh, heads of companies, you know, because there is, there is some women that obviously, you know, even in political atmosphere who um, really run shit. Yeah, it's, it's not that they can't do it. And the thing is, is that masculine and feminine energy exists in everybody, right? It's just a different balance. Mm-hmm. So... So a woman can like exhibit more of a masculine energy. She's still a woman, but at the end of the day, she's still capable of doing, uh, you know, achieving a lot. Um, But at the end of the day, chances are that that person has probably a higher level of masculine energy inside her. And I've definitely met women that are as cutthroat as men. And I, and I think it's dope when I see that I'm like, Oh, that's dope. Like that woman is, what super is, dope like why, why do you think that's dope though i mean i think it's dope because at the end of the day like i think that it's just as dope as anybody else like as a man who would do it to me i think that if you can go into business and and operate off of like a lack of emotion just completely analytical then that's dope but that's that's only if i'm doing business with that woman like if that's my girlfriend like i said she's, yeah. pro- she's probably a more <laughs> <laughs> masculine she, she's probably a more masculine person overall mm-hmm. and and i've seen that too like not even having to date that person but you can see how the masculine energy translates to different aspects of do her you, life do you make that girl your girl is the question for me I, I wouldn't i wouldn't because at the end of the day like to me i'm not uh in a position like i'm not ever gonna necessarily put myself in a position to be like controlled or have anybody like um questioning me and I'm very like fair I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Libra so by nature I'm a fair person and I weigh things out mm-hmm. but at the end of the day like I'm also a man so it's not like I'm gonna like I, I definitely think a man should be able to um, set the tone lay down the rules of his house like you know what I'm saying like th- that's what comes with being a man in my in my opinion so if somebody's constantly like challenging your authority and it's gonna so be constantly you, so, a problem so, so what do you say so, when a woman says that's like old school way of thinking you know what I'm saying? When a woman says, hey, I believe in equality 
in the feminist movement and that's the old way of doing things, you don't think that's outdated? What do you say to women that say that? Because a lot of women say that. You know what I'm saying? I've heard women say, it. yeah, that's cool, that's cool, but like, I make six figures. Yeah, and that's cool, right? And that's dope. Um, but for me, and I think I speak for a lot of men when I say this, is that I'm not, okay, so you make six figures, but that's not going to make me value you more than a girl that makes 25000 to be completely honest, because why, why, if you're a logical person, and that's more, because it's not necessarily more. Because in a in a we're talking about the team, right? So like, if because I'm looking like like let's use let's use a um let's let's compare you know earning to points on the team, for example, right? So okay, you're Kobe Bryant, and you 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 make six figures, you make seven figures, that's great. Um, but me being on your team, is that going to have us number one win? And am I going to become better by you being the star? I mean, it's, it's questionable. Should, should you become better if you're winning though together? So if she's scoring all the points and you guys are actually winning. Let's just say that, you know, you have a job that's paying you 75 grand a year. She has a job that's paying her 175 grand. Right. No, yeah, you're right. You're what you're I'm saying just, is I'm right. Not, not, no, but what you're saying is what you're saying is right, except for the fact that a woman will always look at her man who's earning less and doing less as, well, I'm doing more. They're gonna always look at that imbalance and and feel like that they deserve somebody better than you. Nice. Whereas a man will never look at a woman who's making twenty five thousand and say, "Well, I'm making a million, you're making twenty five thousand. Like a man is gonna be able to say, "Okay, well, come work at my business." Come, come, uh, you know, have this role so that we can make two million or we can make 10, 10 million. You know what I'm saying? So to me, as a team, we're winning more. It doesn't really matter if you are a high high earner or, high, or a high scorer. It's just that Let's do we part to win to yeah. win games? Like we're trying to win games here. And to be honest, I'm not really, you know, like yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like I want the accolades, but at the end of the day, like when you're talking about a relationship, you're talking about um where are we going you know what i mean there's so many guys that they they're doing super well but they they don't have a woman like in their life and they're constantly either paying for women they're paying for friends like there's there's a lot going on right so it's it can't just be that earning and you know what i mean is is the answer it can't be that there has to be a sense of like fulfillment there and i think in for a man it's to also like have a family too, you know what I mean? To have something like a legacy or what do you say women like that like, you know, that's maybe that's not what I want. I want you, but that's not what I want. I don't want the 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 kids and all that. I want to travel the world with you. Uh, I wanna have all these expensive things and live this lavish life and eat food. Cause you know a lot of women that earn high, um I'm not saying that, you know, they all but a lot of women say, yo, I'm not tripping whether I have kids. I've talked to a few with different women myself. And, you know, I'll be like, yo, you know, they ask me, you got two kids, you want any more kids? I'm like, yeah, definitely. I could definitely see myself and more kids. And I'll ask them, and they be like, well, I don't know. You know, my career's going well right now. Yeah. You know, I'm traveling a lot. I want to see the world. And I'm talking about women that's in the well in the 30s, you know, mm -hmm. mid 30s. Some of them in the late 30s, right? Where it's like, that's my main thing. I want to, I want to travel. I want to, I want to see the world. I want to, I want to get another degree. You know, all these things, but, Right. Tend to the home, have children. Kids might make my body look a certain type of way. I don't know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? These type of thought process. See, for me, for me personally, like, I don't, I don't, that would be, that would make us incompatible. You know what mm. I'm saying? Because for me, like, like, let's just say, okay, put it this way. You want nice things. You want to buy Gucci. You want a Mercedes Benz. You want a Bentley. You want Louis Vuitton. But the crazy thing is, is that these brand names are all family names. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it like that, you would say that, well, Louis Vuitton is still living, whoever that is. I've never met him, but he's living. His, his legacy is living, like yeah. living on after yeah, he's yeah. gone. So for me, that's what I'm into. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and number one, I'm so like pro black that like for me, I personally feel like one of my like um, life purposes is to um, is to progress like my family name forward, um, my my race forward. Like even if it's only by a percent, I want it to go down in history or before God. That yes, if it wasn't for DK, 
this would have not have happened or you know what I'm saying or like yeah, yeah, yeah. this is so, I, so let me ask you this then if that's the case like so do you feel that you could do that and still be with a white woman or or any other woman other than a black woman in a interracial situation um that's a very good question and it's something that I do completely honestly think about constantly and I and I and I weigh it out because at the end of the day like when I really go and when I'm on my missions as far as like um self-discovery i'm looking at like you know where, where do my people come from like you know i was talking to my brother the other day he just explained to me because i you know i never grew up around my dad but he went to ghana and he linked with my dad and he was going around and he was like t- like speaking on yo this is where this is what our family is and like basically not basically but literally like we are princes you know what i'm saying like mm. we're like a paternal line of like from king to king to king my dad was like the last prince. So we're like princes, like, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like looking at that, like, whoa, like, oh shit. Like that will motivate me to get a black woman, like to be completely straight up honest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and it's, I definitely feel conflicted. I'm not gonna lie because at the end of the day, I grew up in like North America. So I definitely can agree that um, culture and overall the way I've been socialized definitely makes me attracted to definitely white women definitely the the exotic type of like woman you know what i'm saying 100 percent. like i would even like to be honest black girls always used to tell me like oh you probably don't like black women yeah like, i hit with that all my whole <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i got hit with that my whole my whole but That's truly, I'll tell you that I got hit, hit with the other black girls. You know what I mean? They they say that, but but truly, like when I think about it, like I I think I would like prefer to have a black woman, hundred percent. Yeah, I, it, I feel the, I feel the same way too, man. It's crazy because, like I said, I'm married, and my baby mother isn't even. I was married and they engaged, and neither one of them was black. So I definitely got that 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 stigma on me too. Uh, although you know. Um, I've dated a lot of black women and, and tried, you know what I'm saying? Um, not with obviously every black woman, but I've tried, I've tried with, with multiple black women. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of crazy. I, I, well, I feel like you kind of cancel each other out, right? We both come from a fucked up place and we're both looking to do better, mm-hmm. but we might be in different places in our life. Maybe you're going to look to do better when you're 28. I'm looking to do better when I'm 21. Mm-hmm. It might put us in a whole different situation as far as mm-hmm. alignment. Okay. Right, so I might be like, "Well, I see this woman I can date. This black woman I can be with. Uh, she might come from a similar background as far as like hard upbringing, but she doesn't want to straighten her shit out. She doesn't straighten her shit out until twenty eight, mm. and I'm attacking whatever issues I got going on right now because, you know, if you come from a family of fucked up history, and she comes from a family of fucked up history, and she's the one person in her family that's trying to change things, and you're the one person." The misalignment might be that you guys might be a few years off of acknowledging that you're trying to change these things or acknowledge these habits that you picked up from this toxic environment that you've been in. And that transfers into the dating thing, right? You maybe don't figure out you have daddy issues until 26. Maybe I figured out I had daddy issues at 17 and I was ready for something super serious after I figured that out. Okay, yeah. You think what I'm saying? So now it's not that I don't like a black woman. Maybe it's the alignment and the timing of where I'm trying to go versus where you're trying to go. Maybe you have a bad experience with black men, mm. so it doesn't allow you to put your full trust in me to lead the ship. But when I'm around women of other ethnic, uh, ethnic backgrounds, they 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 are culturally uh, knowledgeable about giving over the ranks mm. and allowing you to lead because. Mm. They see fathers and fathers and grandpas right. lead. So we don't talk about that. We just put the stigma on a black man that, hey, you date this because I seen you with this. Right. So you fuck with that. But we don't get down to the psychology of we only get one life. There's only one right. time, which is the present. And um, what are we going to do with this time? I'm trying to go here right now. You might not want to go here right now because you're not there yet. You might be overcoming the independent phase. Right. Because every black woman has There's, to go through a different level of independency than any other race of women. As you as you as you as you're speaking about this, man, I can't I can't help but think about a recent situation that I was just in. Word. I don't even think I told you about this. Nah, actually. Nah, 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 like, 
So my boy, my boy, you know, he's like, yo, come out with me. I got some friends that, that are in town, right? So I'm like, okay, bet. And I was, and I was excited because me and this homie were super cool and we never kick it, right? So I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm, I'm going out. So boom, we go out. It's uh, a bunch of girls from out of town, right? Um, and uh, so, you know, the one he was checking, cool. And then the the one that was kind of like lined up for me. I mean, I play a good wingman. Like, I play a good wingman. I, I keep the play. You know what I'm saying? So I, I see what it was, and she was she was black, right? And I was like, oh wow, dope. Because I'm in Canada, right? So just like, so I'm like, oh wow, that's dope, right? And and she she was attractive. You know, she was attractive. But the thing was, was that by the end of the night, I was like, this girl is whack, my G. And the craziest thing was, was it was well, like, whack though, what, bro. This wasn't a race thing, obviously. This wasn't even a race thing, but I think race did play, play a part though, because I mean, there was times where she was saying to me like, "Oh, so, so you think, so you think, oh, so you're like, you're, you're the shit, huh? Like, or you think like, like you're that boy, like you're that nigga, like type shit." And I was like, "Yeah, like, <laughs> don't you, right?" And so she was like, she was like. Like, yeah, like she was trying to say she she did think so. But at the same time, she was trying to like almost take my power away from me in a lot of different situations. Like mm. there'd be different aspects of the conversation. And it was like she was trying to downplay me constantly. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, you're a black woman. Like, why are you so cheesed at these different moments? Like, you feel like there's like a, a beef between black women, like an unsaid, unspoken beef between black, absolutely. Women and black women? Absolutely. And and this is what happened. So later on that night, um, I ended up running into um, uh, somebody from my past. It was my ex's uh, sister. Right. So I was super close with this family and she and my ex is not was not black. So it was clear that, you know. So anyways, I run into this girl at the club and just due to the history, there was no way that I was not going to go and have a conversation with her, especially yeah. after all that time. That would just be disrespectful. Like, I'm not, I'm not that person. Yeah. Like, you, you spent time in my like life, so I, I'm just wanna, you know what I'm saying. So I'm definitely going to like have this conversation with you. And so this girl was getting super cheese, bro. Like, she was like, "Oh yeah, I think I seen him. He, I seen him making out with her." I'm like, "Bro," and my boy told me, "I'm like, bro, this is my ex's sister. Like, that would literally never happen. Like, it would never happen." Oh, like, so she made the shit up. She made the shit up, and I'm just like. And so now, and also too, she wasn't she wasn't black too. So I felt like she felt away, and and I think there was a comment about it too. And I was just like, "Yo, like you don't even you're not even having like the respect to like even ask me or or anything." And now you're cheesy, you're mad, you know what I mean? And I feel like now you think that, and it's basically like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm going after these like non-black girls," and it's just like you don't even know the the backstory. So I definitely think that like within um you know. Uh, I don't know. I can't say it's a general thing. I, I would hate to say it's a general thing, but I definitely think that. Well, the reason why I would say somewhat as a general thing because you just gotta look at the history, man. And that I'm just one of those people, right? Like, you know, I fuck with psychology and keep people. Everybody know that sociology or understanding how people work in the community. But when you think of social engineering, like slavery all of it like we were turned against each other yeah and right? i hate to say that it still exists but well, i mean we can't not, not exist no more because the institution is still set up right so as long as it's institutionalized to not like each other the same way it's set up for me not to like you right, right. to look at you and have self-hate and say i would rather see him dead right? right um it's the same reason right so at the end of the day like you see a black woman she can have the finest nicest body, prettiest smile, everything, but just you're gonna be thinking of like, when is this shorty gonna cut my head off or cut off, not even cut my head off, when is she gonna cut my masculinity off? Because that's how they propagated black women to black men. So um, already you don't look at this woman in a nurturing way, you don't look at her in a feminine way, you're looking at her to either, you know, uh, like like she like she's just as masculine as you. That's the way they painted it, right? Yeah, that's how the they painted it. They painted like, you know, don't work with these women. These women are very boisterous. You know, these women in a relationship can't be submissive. So these are all the negative connotations. So that's why I say, you know, when black women say you don't like white, you you don't like black women, we gotta ask ourselves, all the stereotypes, what have we propagated? 
I look at that from the man's side. You know, when they say black men use women, we are womanizers, we do A, B, C, D, and E. I got to look back at my patterns and say, what part am I playing within that stereotype to make them feel that way, even if I would date or marry them? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's what I feel like a lot of black women, uh, they don't think about that because they're so caught up in the fact that you're even speaking about uh, the things that they've had to overcome to get to where they are, right? They don't want to speak about who has made them. We don't want to talk about what the struggle has made you be because at the end of the day, and I only can speak of this because obviously I was raised around all black women. They never, the black women in my family, um, they just say that's the way they are. They don't talk about um, what this struggle or this lifestyles, who, it, who it's made them become to get through this these traumas, right? Because you have to become somebody to get through these traumas or you lose yourself within this whole thing, right? Like, yeah. It's just is what it is. Like, if you grew up without a father and you're a black woman, you have to find out what that love looks like. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, and if your only experience is men who have been in gangs, you don't you don't know that there is something somebody out there that could actually take you away from that. Right. I mean, I think that, like... Um, you know, uh, that also, like, something about that reminds me of, like, dating women outside of the Black, like, culture, though, too, because I think that there's a major disconnect. Um, as much as I, you know, might think certain other girls are hot, you know, I've definitely noticed that there is um, a, a major misunderstanding, and a lot of it does have to do with the fact that other cultures are not actually they can see that there's an there's injustice and that you know black people have been through a lot but they don't actually realize like it's like you see that have you ever seen that video where the gym teacher he has all these kids running a race but they, they have one starting way back because he didn't have a dad he was yeah, yeah, yeah. so all these things right so it's you know, the, I mean, equality race pretty much right and equality race. so to me i'm the you know I might be dating a girl who's not black and she sees me rolling around in my car, in my job, looking the way I look, but they don't realize that that is a lot of distance I came to get to this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Not only that, not only that, but like, you know, I have a good mother. That's something to give props to, respect to. So it's just like, and, I, and I've been through adversity. I could have went this way, but I went that way. I mean, you know, I like, and I told you a little bit about it, but even though I grew up in like Canada, I've experienced like pretty hood, like, yeah. like, like experiences, you know what I mean? So I could have easily went this way. And to be honest, I was just talking to one of my home girl, one of my homegirls, and we were just talking about all the people we grew up with that did go the hood way. And also too, you would think like, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it just, it's just crazy because, um, I'm being, you know, dating, dating women outside of my race. They're comparing me to men outside my race, and I'm like, we're not, we're not even equal. You, me, yeah. me, have, me having a hundred thousand in my pocket is not, it's not the same as you having a, a hundred thousand. Like it's like having a million dollars. It's like having a million dollars at yeah, least. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hundred percent. You can't. Real shit. Like it's just not. Like it's not the same. My zero, your zero, two different zeros. Exactly. I started, I started off a negative number, and you started off in a positive. Exactly. Yeah, so we can never be equal. You can. You know, and I guess that, you know, that's funny you say that because I think in my community, even with the, with black women, that's been the hard part, right? Because it's like, um, it's almost like you can't miss what you never had, mm. right? So, yeah, I might meet a black girl and I might ask her, you know, uh, how you ever had a man do this for you? How you ever built with a man? How you ever? And she might say, I don't need to do this or that. Well, I can't expect you to want that and crave that because you never had it. Right. Right. So as much as I'm trying to pour into you, the system, you know, has made you independent. Right. Now, you can say to yourself, a lot of people say, I had to do it. Da -da -da. No, it's a system. And it was, you know, fight or flight. But at the end of the day, now that makes you sometimes almost unapproachable because men want to feel needed and dependent on. Right. Right. So if you kind of fucked up past where you're like, I can't depend on nobody. Who has fucked? Who have you fucked with? What have they done and shown you that mm -hmm. now that I got to overcome all of that? You deal with women that sometimes are a different race. Mm -hmm. um, they may not be overcoming that. 
So now, but the problem, but the other problem on the flip side is, they're also not going to know what to do when adversity hits. Well, okay. One thing I wanted to say, like one thing I wanted to say was that building, right? Building with a woman outside of uh, of the black race, like okay. The thing is, when you when you date a girl who, like, for the most part, women, they have a certain like idea when they're going to date a black dude they, they oh, have yeah, of course you know what i'm saying they have like a kim oh. a kim kardashian like type of lifestyle in their mind to where yeah, they're, like, they're actually not so they're not going into it with the same oh, they, reality it's not reality it's not reality and they're not actually trying to build with a black man yeah you know that's a fact that's a fact that's, this, these are facts they just they they think it looks cute they think they're gonna have i, I wouldn't say they're actually not trying to build i think and i wouldn't say they're trying because this is my own personal experience like any woman that I've been with outside of my race, it depends on the black man, right? If your standard is to build, they're gonna come over like that. These are, a lot of the women are camouflagers. I call them camouflagers. And I say uh, camouflagers because you're gonna tell them, there's a lot of white women that ride, I come from a state in a city where the white women ride for niggas, right? I'm talking about really ride for niggas. Yeah, like, ride, okay. No, I'm talking about take a charge. This is a well-known thing in my city, right? Okay. But it's not for the, it's not with the endearment of I love you, it's with the idea of see I'm a rider. That's what I'm saying. Like it's the it's the cookie cutter, but I'm I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying saying they will do the action. That's my whole point. Okay. They'll do the action a few times to show you that they're down, but they don't even understand why they're doing the action. Right. Okay, okay, okay. No, but then see like, you know, I'm from like I'm from I, I spent like a lot of time in Vancouver where so now it's different because there's not really like riders in that sense. I, I feel like I know what you're talking about. They're more in Calgary, but <laughs> but but I would assume that there's a lot more where like in you know what I mean Minnesota, right? Well, it's okay. Um, yeah, you from the middle of Canada, right? Right. For the Midwest in general, right? Like yeah. it but, was but, like, it's a liberal place in the sense, not liberal like in the place where it's like so we're like it's just okay, but it's such a forbidden fruit, and it's not the South that women are open to trying things that they've seen on TV, right? But no, I was I was gonna say like in Vancouver, right? It's it's definitely more of that like I want a black dude who is a baller and has some kind of status. Yeah. And it's honestly pretty lame. Like it's, it's it's getting to the point where it's just like you know like I it's it's almost hard to like um it's hard to to even date them like in a way because at the end of the day like I I'm looking at it like to be honest you could sub me out for anybody and. That's a fact. That's some real get out shit, by the way. Right. That's some real like get out, like how the white girl in the movie was just flicking through the pictures and these niggas all were like athletes, entertainers, really kind of cookie cutter. Yeah. To, yeah. to, to, to what the ideal interracial couple would look like. Right. And I'm like, man, you could stub me out and put anybody in here and you wouldn't even know the difference. And that to me is disrespectful because again, the way you see me right now, you have no clue what how it took to get to this place. No, that's, that's a that's a that's that is a that that outlook is so crazy because uh, black men we forfeit that. Oh, mm. we forfeit that when we when we get with a with a with a woman of a different race because we might tell you certain things, but we almost want to correct certain behaviors mm. to not show you that we came from that, right? So it's almost self-loathing where you came from, in my oh, opinion. Oh, true, right? okay. Because we want to show you that we're hood because we know you're attracted to that, but we don't want to show you anything that could downplay our character of poverty or make you think this one pl- this is one day where you could end up. Right, So it's we always So bro. we distance ourselves from it. Yeah. We stopped hanging with certain people, certain family members. I got a homeboy, mm. I won't say his name. He just married, you know, um, a white woman. And um, I believe he loves her, but I, I told him that I was scared for him because uh, when, when, when all your pictures is just you and her family, mm. right? Because it's usually like that. Very okay. rarely do you see the white woman around all of his family all of the time. Right. Right? It's right. usually like mm. he's a part of their family portrait. Right. Their situation, their family business, their family structure. Mm. Right? So it's almost like it's not like they say choose this or that, but you feel it. You feel it like this is where you should be. You you're different than them. They right. separate you from 
Right. This piece that you came from. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Or Lil Johnny and them over there, they're a lot different. Even though you and Johnny, Lil Johnny ate the same things growing up, mm-hmm. messed with the same type of women, might even did the same crimes. You might have got away with it, Lil Johnny did it. Right. So she demonizes everybody from that right. side of the track and says, hey, you're not like that. You're like us. Civilized people. Crazy. Right? But they don't say it like that. It's more. But no, it's it, it's, it's kind of said like that in a way. Well, yeah, well, wait, no, what I'm saying, like, well, you have an education, look how far you came. Right. You have a better job. Why couldn't they do better? Now, understanding that the statistics of the, what they are is because it was just, sometimes it's just luck. Right. Right? Sometimes I really wasn't better than Lil Johnny. It was just, but, Lil no, Johnny got in trouble and it was, I didn't get in trouble, right? Right. So it wasn't okay, that yeah, I was better yeah. than Lil Johnny. It was right. that. The streets caught Lil Johnny before they could catch up to me. True, true, right. That's most of the times is what it is. Where I say from coming from the hood, like we're mm-hmm. all in the same pot. Nobody's mm-hmm. uh, not guilty. Okay. Just because even if you're not the one killing niggas and you know what I'm saying, doing this or that, you're riding around with the killers. So right, right. Like you could be Lil Johnny. Yeah, that's you just crazy. got the sports scholarship. Somebody took you in off the street. Whatever it is, yeah, yeah. we're not different, but they decide in a relationship to separate you from them as if you were the unicorn. And it really right. was like you were a unicorn. The universe just said, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity. doesn't make you different. It just means that you were afforded a different opportunity or saw the opportunity that these people didn't see. And That's crazy. But see, you know, that, that again, it goes back to like, for me, why... I could not not like never date a woman who she just wants to travel and she wants to do this and that because it's like yo how am I gonna go and live a life of bliss in ignorance and look at my people and not yo that's you know crazy no I used to always say that though right because you know I, I I had um when I got married when I got married you know a lot of shit changed and i was already you know doing my thing somewhat before that but like obviously when you join two incomes and somebody who came from a different background and got different knowledge and you got um you see different things you know your palette's different you you um you start from the fabrics different shit just changes right so then you go back to these places and you still got the same love for these people but what do you do now that you've had this different experience right it's like i always get the experience of like you know, what do you do when you, after you eat your first cookie? Mm. What do you do? We off. We don't might not remember the first time we had a cookie, but we know that now we can't put cookies down. Right. Right? So what do you do when you go to your first five-star restaurant? What do you do after you put on, you realize that the fruit balloon shirt is 100% cotton and you feel silk? Mm-hmm. What do you do? Right? That's a hard thing to choose from. Because now you start taking culture and associate. <laughs> Bless you. Um, you. You start taking culture and you start associating it with what? The things you like and you don't like. Mm-hmm. So as much as I like Lil Johnny and them over here, these niggas don't know nothing about Silk. Mm-hmm. They don't... I want to talk about these foreigners that are riding in. I want to talk about this crib that we just copped over here. I want to talk about, you know what I'm saying, what, is, what, it, what it's like to, to get up, wake up, not gonna go to work and drink champagne. Johnny see, and them can't talk about that. But see, for me, and the reason why it's so important for me to build is that, like, so these foreigns, I want to know it's a black name on the on the car for me personally. Like that's no, just I'm, I'm not that. And and, I and, and, I and when I go and when I go on vacation, I personally do not feel like I want to go to the south of Spain. I don't want to go to Rome. I don't want to go to like I don't want to go mm. none of those places. I want to go to Ghana. Like I want to go to Nigeria, I want to go to Ethiopia, I want to go to these places, and mm. and that's just where I want to go. Like so, I don't. So to me, there's building that needs to happen. Like, and I want to be a part of that, right? And so I, that, love, I love, I love that. But I think that's also too the privilege privilege of being an individual, but still having your roots and knowing where you come from and being Canadian, right? Okay, right? Because that's not we just not fed that in America. If you mm. came from it, right? It's like we're always looking at, we're not looking to Africa. We're looking across town to see what so-and-so got. Right, okay. Right? So I'm not thinking about Nigeria because all the Nigerians I know, they're paying to us as scammers and people who uh, don't like us. Right? So we're not looking up to them. We're seeing them have success, but we're not looking to them as the prototype of what we're trying to become 
because white America is the most prevalent thing in front of us. And their accomplishments and the way it's painted in America is if once you get into this restaurant, you've made it. Right, right. So I've, I've arrived when, when I go to the UK. I've arrived when I go to the south of Spain. I arrive when I'm no, in I Switzerland. No, I get that, but, and that's why I'm saying that. No, but I'm saying that you, the fact that you've seen something. That I've different. seen it. Different. No, but, but that's why I'm saying that literally, like, that would make that type of woman incompatible to me. No, you know 100%. Because I will literally, like, I will literally, like... It makes it incompatible to the, to the, to the black American, too, right? Mm. It's just... And that's the hard part. That's why I say we have it the hardest in America because it might make the woman incompatibly culture-wise, but on paper is what we cared about the most because we knew that on paper was the thing that actually mm. changes the perception of your stock. Because well, when I'm I mean, walking, I feel that same way too. But at the end of the day, like I feel that same way too. But at the end but of the you've day, seen what I'm it in a different way. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm still out here like dating women or you know that are still comparing me to to certain things right like so what i'm saying is like either way like i will literally what am i talking about in general right i'm saying that like instead of going to work for um you know any specific company and i might be able to make six figures seven figures there at the company i'm fully capable of doing it but I would much rather start my own company and make five or, figures without and make five figures now. And then maybe I might have some kind of wave or legacy that might translate. And like, you know, that company might become the next Goldman Sachs or it might become the next like Louis Vuitton or something like that. So, but I'm saying that like, I, I still feel that way in the sense that like, Oh shit, like these guys are doing this and that maybe. Right. Or, but I'm taking the long route. So, uh, I mean, I still feel that way. Yeah. I, well, most Africans take the long route. And that's what you're trying to say in general. Most Africans take the long route because they came here and they built it off each other's backs. Most black men have built it with other cultures. If they got it, it came from another culture. This is what I'm saying, right? So how you talking about motherfuckers going to Ghana and parading and doing their thing? I'm looking at it in a place of, oh shit, every black American I've seen teamed up with a Jew, they teamed up with the Asian, they teamed okay, up with... Okay, I see, I see. You know what I'm saying? Like, to see, and that's why I keep saying, like... It's the, yeah, the, it's vi the, vis the visual is... It, it's it's everything, right? When you look is, at an African dancing in Africa... But that's why I do... But that's why I do what I'm doing, really, is because it's for the visual, and, like, I realize... Yeah, no, I, that's the biggest thing. No, that, I think that's the biggest thing. I think you're on to something, and that's why I keep saying it's the, it's the luxury, but it's also... That's why I keep saying when we talk about race and women, we're talking about a man's status, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. no matter what woman, black or white, it's going to be a status symbol on you, right? Right. So black men who are athletes, you know, if you been, play the professional sports, a college sport, um, are you more likely to sign to an agent with a white or a black girl? Right. You ever thought about that? If you're like, if you're likely to do it, if you're likely to do a lot of different things based on, because I, I feel like most black men date white women. Not because they just are attracted to white women because, I mean, this might be too deep for y'all, but it's the Willie Lynch syndrome, right? It's the status of it. What does it do for me or feeling like I got the person who was once conquered my culture? True. This actual item. True. How am I looked at when I walk into the room and, you yeah, know what I'm saying, I have a pretty ass white woman that should be on, you know, um, Jack's arm, but he's on Ty, she's on Tyrell's arm. Right. Right? For um, sure. And it, yeah, it's fuck. I mean, look at yeah. look at Tiger Woods. He just right now for making his girlfriend got sued for thirty million dollars. It wasn't even his wife got sued for thirty million dollars. It might even be more money than that. Uh some common law shit. Not even common law shit for just uh showing her certain things. She's doing them for something like as far as like a lifestyle that he just showed her. What? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So you think about it like that, but what was he had to be thinking? To go get that right mm -hmm. he had to be thinking like oh shit like initially this woman could take care of herself so men technically love taking care of women who they know could do it themselves there's something uh there's something more satisfying satisfying for a man most of the time that can do that right and when i say that i mean like when i say a woman that can take care of herself i mean a woman that like Possesses the qualities or had parents that could, but decides to depend on you for it. 
Okay. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. So I can go get it from anywhere, but I'm deciding to like to allow you to do it. I mean, or or the broke chick that's, that's everyone. I wouldn't say that's every uh, every guy feels that way. I don't think so. I think that a lot of guys would feel like like I didn't say every guy, but I'm talking. About, I feel like a lot of men. I mean, the women that act I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Like, like I think a lot of guys too, which is me. I would say that like I would like to to get the girl who would never have access to this and I'm the one who brought her here for the first time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of course, but I'm talking about uh, knowing that she could. When I say knowing that she could, whether it's somebody else that could take her or or she could take herself, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Because I mean, why, I mean, why, are, why are most, why, why are a lot of chicks who uh, haven't been in these places or haven't done these things, why are they not getting more, more experiences to get to these places? Because men, once men know that you're all you're here is for dinner, they slow up to doing it. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe. If you knew you could fuck a bitch in a cardboard box, would you take it to a hotel? Um, no, you wouldn't. But okay, but I'm, no, you I wouldn't. Think I'm talking about something a little different. Though. No, but it's, you're saying experience. I'm saying that's an experience as well. I'm saying if you know you could fuck a woman in a cardboard box or in a fucking pinto. You wouldn't worry about the Bentley. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Most men, we do what we do most of the time. For what? For the excitement of women. Right. Most men go attend. We go put on these clothes. We go put on these chains. We right. might like it, but we really know they love it. We hope right. they love it. So yes, yes, you would. Yes, you would want to show her her first experience. But what you want to, you would want to know that somebody else, she could be doing this with somebody else. But she's deciding to do it with you. I think that's still the feeling. That's it's still something the I'll have to think about. I mean, I think I think I'll have to think about it, but I don't know if I feel that way. I'm just saying. That. So okay, do you want? Do you a lot of times want? Do you do you do you like women that other men want? Do I like women that other, other men, men want? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, like if she's attractive, then yeah, like so it's other ones that other men want. Yeah. Right. So you would want that same girl to know that she could have that experience with Joe Schmo off the street, but she decides to have that experience with you. She decides to let you take her overseas. But you know that she has options. No, but, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, we talked about like a, a girl who she might have, like she already had it and has access to it already. But that's the access. The access is not just having it because most women who parade this lifestyle, even if they make a lot of money, still aren't paying for it. Yeah, I get that. Right? But it's the access to it. I mean, I, like I said, I have to think about it because I just don't know if I if I feel that way. I'll have to... Well, I would say that because like, we've had conversations in the past, so that's why I brought that up. Right. Like, we, we both like women that are extremely gorgeous. Right, in different facets, Right? And we, we both know these women, they're not just gorgeous to us. Yeah. They're gorgeous to most men. Right. But we want to be the ones that show them a good time. Yeah, of course. And I agree with that. But I'm just saying, did she come from like a family where she already had it? Or did she already have guys that already had it? To me, I she like... She come from a family where they already had it, but she might not experience it yet. And right. didn't want to experience it yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was in a situation that, like, that way with my baby mother where it was like, uh, she came from it. You know what I'm saying? Came from money, but she ain't, the, she ain't had it all yet. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes every family don't give it to you. That's I'm not talking about like the spoiled brat where I'm just okay. throwing millions of money. I'm talking about a woman who has access to it but hasn't seen it or had it yet themselves. And then you're still the one again because most men don't want no woman that no other man wants. That's the thing, right? We walk in the spot. The exclusive thing is to say, I got the baddest thing in here and you ain't had her. Mm -hmm. You ain't show her this. I show her that. I feel like most men feel that way, the same way you just felt that. Yeah. Like most men, we all feel that way. Like, but at the end of the day, knowing that she has, it's something that's attractive to knowing that you have access yeah, to it. Yeah, I get but knowing saying. that, but knowing that that you're not choosing to do it because it actually means something to do it with somebody that you actually want to do it with. Yeah, I mean, I get, I hear what you're saying. I get, I get it, and I, yeah, I can, I have to think about it for sure and see. You know what I mean? Like, um. For me, like, to be honest, like, the biggest thing, regardless of whether or not, like, like, her access to it, because again, like, yeah, like, I have dated girls that 
that are ridiculously, um, you know, good looking, right? And then they go out, like, and after me, they got dudes that are balling, like, after me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, so that's not really, like, that big to me anymore, like, as much as it is, like, having a, a girl that I could really actually build with, me personally, right? So, like, I will, like, as much as I've had the tape, if I've had, now nah, I've worn that silk of a s- extremely uh, beautiful woman, yeah. but at the same time, I'll also go down on my standard for, like, uh, to actually go for a woman that, like, is really actually down to build. And to me, I think that that's, like, above all else, like, the, the most valuable thing right now, and, and it's actually... Something that like is kind of whack to me because everybody says that, but I personally don't see many people who will well, actually do it. Who will actually do it at least by my standards. So I no, I, I agree with that too. That's that's a dope statement, and I, I agree with that because I mean I think I think, but that's the logic of I think. I mean I think most men are like that though. When I say most men are like that, it's just that uh, it comes to a point in in in, in everything in every man or, or every man in life or any man that has some success. Where do we want the headache and the maintenance of something, right? It's like the men that drive could go get the forms, but they're driving around in fiats or True. certain things, right? There's a lot of those men because at the end of the day, it's maintenance. And True. what we don't have time to is always stop and maintenance. This isn't a fucking F1 race. We're not trying to stop and maintenance every 10 minutes. So we get something that is reliable. Not only that, not only that, but I might get more miles on the gallon to. <laughs> with with the with the Honda in so what that what that means is literally I, I might even be able to actually go farther with with this girl you know what I mean yeah. that she might be and for able, less and that's the real that's for less said, for less that's that's, that's the main thing yes. that I'm saying right like the maintenance like maintenance on this Ferrari is is it's a lot more expensive right it's a lot more frequent um 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 you're watching how you drive it mm-hmm. every single month which is at some point unless you got ridiculous amounts of money. You don't want to be worried about that. You just want to get in the car and drive. I just, just want to get there. I want to wake up in the morning with the woman and just it works. get to it, right? Yeah. Like I'm not trying to maintenance this thing every single day 100%. and do checks and balances every moment of the day because this is so high maintenance and so high value. Hundred percent. So, like you know what I'm saying? That that's that's what I'm. That I think that's what I was trying to say as far as even with the whole uh, back to the whole. You want the Honda that looks like Ferrari. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant. That's really what it is, right? That's why they're making all these cars like Hondas and Hondas look like these cars because true. in general, in life, that's what men want anyway. Right. Right. That's true. We want the Ferrari sound, but not the Ferrari cost. Right. Right? So I would get the chick that's an eight and it has glam type stuff, Fact. but she she's way less on maintenance. And, and sometimes mean, she'll do her own nails. Sometimes. Yeah, and you could throw the tints on it, you could put the rims on it, and next thing you know, it, it you might not even know the difference. You might not even know the difference. Right. Right. So in a relate that's how I'm looking at it, but that's what I was trying to say. Like, you still can get the experience when I pull up to the fucking right. ocean. Everyone's you're still looking. looking. Right. Right? Like, what yeah. the fuck is that? Yeah. Right? And then you get up close and you're like, oh, she's an eight. But I'm like, I'm still laughing because I'm like, yeah, you might got the 10, but like, my eight is gonna get me further. Right. And I didn't do what you had to do to get the fucking ten. Right. I didn't have to make the bit down payment. I just had to be True. originally myself. I just showed up with my regular credit, my <laughs> regular self, yeah. my regular yeah. jobs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was enough. It was enough to get this car. Right. Right. So it's the same thing with these women. Like True. We, we want the car that's gonna go all the places and that looks cool that we do not have to constantly service and think of what happens if I hit this fucking rim? I'm not worried about Shorty if we hit a pothole because she gonna say it's all good because I love you for you. Right. And I knew it. I, you know what I'm saying? You know what you're getting with a Honda. You just know what you're getting with it. Right. And the thing is, is like, don't get it fucked up out there. We don't mean that because it's a Honda, it's low value. No, no. I mean, how they actually better they, be they, 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 yeah, they, they hold their value. Better than they hold their value. Cars, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I oh, might drive a Ferrari off the lot that was two hundred thousand. This motherfucker might be worth one hundred twenty-five the second <laughs> I drive it off. In fact, I'm driving off with this Honda, and three years later, it's still all keeping its fucking value. Right? That's crazy, right? So it's the same thing, like you know what I'm saying. And again, that's what I said, like high value shit is for people 
who have a high value lifestyle and have shown over the years that they can maintain high value items, right? That's just is what it is. Like uh, uh, you niggas want to be high value men and have all these women, but they haven't maintained one woman. Mm-hmm. So how do you do that, right? You haven't been able to maintain uh, a Honda for two years, but you want to jump in a Rari right out the gate? You ain't had a car yet. You want to jump from no car to the Rari. You think you're not going to wreck it. True, true. You're going to wreck it. It's natural. Every kid that I know that got a nice car growing up, Audi, whatever the fuck, they wrecked it. All the kids I know that got super nice cars, matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Like, the niggas got chargers, challenges. If you had a nice car when you were a kid, you drove it recklessly and you wrecked it because you didn't understand the value and the maintenance of it. For sure. It wasn't until you really had it, you had some shit that wasn't that, and you took care of that and said, oh shit, maybe I could get a Ferrari because I keep my car clean every single day. I get my oil changed every two, three thousand miles. Maybe I might want to jump in that Ferrari because, you know what I'm saying? And that's why niggas sometimes, what happens with other dudes, they hop in the Ferrari and they kind of get right back in the Honda. Mm-hmm. Cause that first payment hit you, that first few payments hit you, and that first break job hit you, and you say, "Oh, this ain't for me." They get that first chick, and you say, "Baby, where you want to go? I'm gonna take you wherever you want to go." And she said, oh, "I want to go to Nobu in Malibu." And you look at your account, man. You got four hundred dollars in there, and that bill three hundred and fifty dollars after drinks. Imagine trying to keep that up. I mean, yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's, that's why for me. That's why for me, it's really like I to like to be completely honest. Like, if you're not really willing to go, like, get this McDonald's with me, like, will never be a thing. To be completely honest. And the crazy thing is, you you taking the McDonald's just like I would take them to coffee. When we both could take them to a new boo consistently. Mm-hmm. I could consistently do that. Um, I'm not rich, but I could consistently do that. But guess what? That would do to me. It would take resources from all other places. True. So I'm, I'm missing other components, right? Because you're so high maintenance, like, you know, I might got the Ferrari, but now I gotta go stay in the two uh, bedroom walk up. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta compromise yeah. other things yeah. over here to, for this high maintenance item. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's really the, the depreciating value. And that was just exactly what I was gonna say is that, like, at the end of the day, like, it needs to be an asset. You know what I mean? It has to be an asset. Like, how do you just. Because again, it's 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 we're comparing it, right? We're making a comparison, and it's just like, yeah, the Honda might cost you money, and it does depreciate in some value. But at the end of the day, the fact that you can rely on it, it turns it into an asset. It means that I can hop in my whip and drive to Phoenix and not actually have to be tripping. I didn't have to do an oil change one time. Like all these different things, right? Like so, it becomes an asset because now I I can actually get. I can rely on, like you said, I can actually rely on it. Yeah, and 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 it has a warranty and all the rest of those things. Like right, you know what I'm saying? Um, You drive some of these cars, you even touch it, the warranty done. You know what I'm saying? You do Mm -hmm. this or you do that, the warranty done. It's just like these women. You know what I'm saying? You you do one thing Mm -hmm. that's off of her shit that she normally would go for. It's over for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't pay the Ferrari. You won't get to six months before Ferrari starts coming to pick your car. But you want to know what's crazy about that whole thing is that, you know, what's crazy is these women, they want, they want, they want to feel like a, a Ferrari so bad because they want somebody who's high value. But it's crazy that the people who really got the stupid money drive Hondas and Subarus and shit like that. Yeah, I mean, look, shit like that. Yeah, shit like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, and, and look, I mean, if you look at all the sports cars, go look at these dudes' wives. You're not going to be like, yo, she's a 10. Right. You're just not. I don't care who these stars are. I've, I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? Look at the dude that plays Ghost. But not, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? On, on Power of Night, she's not ugly, but that's not who you would expect it for him to be with. Right, and but see the thing is, is you could even ju- you could even justify them doing that because of the fact that okay they're in you know some sort of entertainment, so there's some aspect of that their image they have to keep up. But I'm even speaking on like that business owner maybe or that Jeff Bezos or like these types of characters. I always like like Subarus is like the billionaire like car. Yeah, like not joking. Yeah, like, for some reason I don't know. But at the same time, they're looking at it like. Yo, is this a valuable car? Am I gonna get the bang for my butt? Like, and can I get? The, I mean, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying. For when, when you 
when most men simplify their life, they're looking to get from point A to point B. That's the thing. Just like a, I think they said Bill Gates or one of these guys, they don't even, they just wear the same thing every single day, literally. Like, because they said that they don't want to have to think about making a decision every right. day. And that's what I'm saying. When you got, when you got, when you're, when you're on that level, and even if you're not on that level in general, you just view yourself and value yourself on a high level. You don't want to have to think about what the chick's doing. You don't want to have to think about if she's wanting more. You know what I'm saying? You don't mm-hmm. want to have to think about it. It's it's kind of like it does what it does. She does what she does because that's just who she is. Yeah, that's how kind of just does what it does because that's just how it's built. You know that's what I'm saying? Built. Um, yeah, it's built that's, different. That's, built different. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually... I look at it now in a sense now when we look at social media I'm putting it's still science now just like the car shit just how we're speaking about it it's all to a science mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying when 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 the new chick drops you know what I'm saying with the new lips and the new ass oh right the new hairstyle the new nail style the new ass because uh, it's you know this is waves of different shapes of asses and titties all all these things have a nuance and a wave to it you know what I'm saying? Yes. It sets a standard, just like cars, right? Right. You know, uh, BMW will start putting a certain car on their car. And right. You see other cars market. Exactly. Mark, mark, the, mark the style, the trend. Just like eyebrows, just like lips, just like yeah. makeup. These, yeah, these, yeah. Eyelash, these eyelashes. I mean, I, who would have thought like girls would have two to three inch eyelashes? Like that would actually be a thing. I mean, I mean, the thing that really gets me nowadays is the eyebrows, bro. Like, I be seeing some certain eyebrows, and I'm like, yo, this is not. Um, but it's, it's it's like in style, though. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's that, that's what I. That, but some of them are shaving the eyebrows all the way off too. Who like a Doja Cat? Like, yeah, like a Doja Cat, or they'll um, or they'll bleach them. Yeah, like blonde, and it looks uh, to me that just uh, you look like um, I don't know, you look kind of like. Like non-human, basically. Like it doesn't look human. You know what I mean? Like that specifically. No, hundred percent. But I, you know the crazy thing is with this shit is I think it all still is always going to bore down to me about um, a woman's spirituality. Thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, because all the things that we just even unraveled, like it's going to bore down to who are you answering to? If it's not to me as your man, what higher power? are you answering to because that's what you're giving your attention and energy to well yeah anything that you basically praise or worship you know these things become your god that is what your god yeah 100 percent, right so it's not it's not what you profess it's the lifestyle you live so I, I like 100 like, you can get all the tattoos you want crosses and yeah, bible yeah. verses but if if you Really praise money and you praise your own looks, like and these things. That how, is your Hollywood hip, like the love and hip hop shit. Like if that's who you praise and you religiously watch. That's right, who you keeping are. up with the Kardashians. That's, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so at some point, you know, um, we're dating offsprings of these individuals, right? Like, and I was told by you know I was raised by a lot of. Uh, I was like pimps and players and, and, mm. and men promiscuous men, but wise men in the sense of knowing how women work. And, and, and you know, um, a lot of people say that you need a woman's representative before you ever meet her. Right. And a representative is who she's showing you. Right. It's what she's showing you, the ideal she wants you to have of her. Right. So if that's the case, then who are you looking up to? And who is this representative based around? Right, exactly. Right? Because very few women are basing things off their grandmas. Mm. Even if their grandma has had a you know a good relationship, or maybe in their eyes, because I've heard women say, well, my grandma's still my grandpa, but like he's cheating, he's done all these things. I could never be like her, even if she still has them. Right? They yeah. say they don't sleep in the same bedroom no more, not realizing that a relationship at some point, it really just about partnership. Because you're gonna be in and out of love the whole time. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not a it's not a it's not a Hollywood movie. It's not a uh, rom com. Yeah, yeah, no facts. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's just not like it's not a rom com. Like women, but no, but that's how women look at it. Like if it's not that that that, whoo! Every day I come home, you knock my socks off. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, then it, then it's dead. It's, yeah. it's, it's not it's not uh, there's no meeting ground. Like 
100%. He better put, you know what I'm saying, all this, he better apply pressure. You know what it takes to apply pressure every single day to anything? Well, to anything, to anything. When I say apply pressure, I mean apply pressure to your job, apply pressure to your workout regimen, apply that's pressure what I'm saying. to all that, That's what I'm saying. You got to be really right within self, right? And like, the thing is, is no matter how alpha you are, no matter how like, um, lit you are in general, you could be the most masculine man. You're going to have your off season, yeah, your, your yeah. season where you're not the most lit. Yeah. And like, if that means that if that's the season where I'm not coming home and knocking your socks off and it's not per- the perfect rom-com lighting with the diffusion filter <laughs> and it looks dreamy, then that means like, does that, is that where, you that's know, where it we, that's, that's where it ends, right? That's like, where it ends for most women. These and, modern, like modern and, women. Yeah, you know. That's what I say. Most when I say most women, I just mean like modern. Most women. women, when you when you ask them what it has to be, they're gonna tell you he better come within every aspect. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? And but you ask him this, and I come within in every aspect, and I'm like, well, you do know what that means, right? Like, are you always emotionally available? Mm. Like I was on a date with a woman, and she told me that. Um, I asked her, say, you know, how do you deal with your feelings and like your past relationship? She said, I don't. Whoa. I just focus on being happy from moment to moment. So it just you made us really think about like, motherfuckers ain't taking no time to digest situations. Right. They're basing their happiness based on how they can make themselves feel or tell themselves at that moment. So well, yeah, I mean, and, and that that is like really. The crazy thing is, is like, yeah, that is kind of a common narrative in a way. I do kind of hear like, like, you know, versions of that. But what's really like scary is that that is like the precursor to like sociopathic, like uh, personalities and like narcissistic, like actual like. So so would you say that most women, because they would say narcissistic people are very aloof as well as... uh, like they build up their own narrative without there being real evidence. Right. It's happened, right? So it's the ability to take a situation and make it about you and put you in a hierarchy in it, even if you're the one doing the negative shit. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I'm able to, to gaslight you. I'm able to do all these different things to you to dissipate any way that you come at me. It's yeah. always like I'm, I'm constantly on the offense. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know I could do better, but I'm choosing to be with you. Yeah. I shouldn't even be here, but I'm really here with you because Well I know you I know I know I could do better, but I know you love me. But you know what's even worse like what's even like worse in my opinion, that that is a problem. That actually is a problem. And I talked to a homie who he expressed that um in his relationship and and it's fucked up because it's fucking him up. And we don't actually speak on like the mental like a uh, hardship that like some women put men through so that is a fucked up thing um but also like it kind of goes to what you said as far as like yo when you move forward from your last relationship and you are maintaining this sort of narrative in your head where you didn't do anything wrong and you are just a complete catch and yeah. you know every man like you just need to upgrade but really you actually don't deserve to upgrade you actually deserve to downgrade okay. because your personality is trash and you haven't dealt with certain little things like you just haven't done yeah no 100 percent. and you won't and you won't because uh because you started the only fans and now you got ten thousand and you but just and you just and you just, ended, and you just ended your body now so now you think your value just went up but mentally and spiritually is down, is down, is down, is down some points. And that's why I keep saying it goes back to the original point that men and women aren't equal. Because mm-hmm. a man can go get all these different things and a woman still treat him like a choke. Right. Right? Like, you should still treat you like a choke. That's a fact. Like, it happens all the time. I know a lot of corny niggas who don't get pussy who still got nice cars. How many girls you, you know who got nice bodies? You corny niggas who don't get pussy but still have nice cars yeah 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 it's oh yeah a lot, lot of them a lot I met them. them you know what I'm saying I know a lot of motherfuckers who got <laughs> nice cars and shit and still struggle with getting some pussy without having to actually come out of their pocket and pay for it 100% a woman 100%. who has a nice ass and all that 
But man, like it goes back to what Chris Rock said in the thing, like mm. Jay Z would go grab Beyonce out of Burger King if she was working there. Right. Beyonce would never in a million years go and see the good in Jay Z if he worked at Burger King because you could have a get as a woman get to wrap your mind around somebody who's wrapping burgers up. And then yeah. think that he may could do something better. A man be like, you don't deserve to be in this place. Let me take you out of here. A woman Yo, say, you know, no, you work there? Call me when you ain't working there no more. Yo, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think that might be I think that might be a good place to really cap this off on is to to, to, to really like speak to women and be like, yo, like, okay, would you because for me, like I want the girl Personally, like I want the girl who would fuck with me if I was at Burger King or driving Uber. I, that's who I'm actually. I've only dealt with women. See, that's the thing with me, right? right. See, that's, to me, that's what my whole value and structure has been, and my confidence has came in. Like my confidence has came about meeting the woman that I end up falling in love with that has seen me in my doubt. In moments, the work, hundred percent. Right? That's uh, like the that's like the real. But that's goal. so rare because how many women? That's why men usually. We're more loyal than women because we cherish women who do stuff like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Right now, not and the women. This is where women. Let me just say, just look at the camera and say, this. women, y'all think because we might sleep with somebody else that we don't value that. That man doesn't ever want to leave you because you've you've seen him through every season. Hundred percent. So though he might be tricking off with the chick who now. Is actually looking at him who wouldn't look at him before. He knows that this is a sexual encounter and nothing more because he feels like, yo, yeah, you wouldn't fuck with me when I was down. Now, as a man, we're still hunters and by egotistical. So, yeah, we got to knock you off. You know what I'm saying? But what, what, I, what I said before is that men bring a different level of emotion to sexual inter like yeah you know? yeah yeah so yeah. they're really they're really actually um they might sleep with the uh the new girl that likes him because he's driving the Lambo but he's really he's really beating that up like as if like okay well I just wanted to try this five star restaurant like I just wanted to try yeah, it. yeah 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 I just I just always wanted to try it to be honest but I still love the home cooked meal like that's how yeah. men think for real yeah no that's that's a and women that's a thing like I don't understand how y'all don't see that. That's how men are thinking, right? Like y'all just just not understanding that that's where a man's mentality goes. You're not the prize because he decides to wine and dine you for a night or a week or take you on this vacation. You are a casualty of mm. war. Right. You're a casualty of my ego and what I feel like I need to do to get this out of my system. 100%. So I can be all I can't be to this woman at home. <laughs> yeah. As fucked up as that sounds, right? Because I can't be men. This is why women like men with experience. I can't be who I really am until I get do that. That's a fact. That's I can't. I can't. There's no way that I can. If I have not experienced and understood that that pussy is no different than your pussy. I'm oh, no, no. Yeah, you have right? to go, you have So to once I understand that, oh, that's what I'm saying. The rich man drives a Ferrari and still charges the chooses the Prius because he realized at the end of the day, they both cars take gas and both cars get him to the crib. <laughs> yeah, we nice. don't know that until we've driven the other <laughs> As much <laughs> as you think we would not, Yeah, we can't. We could not possibly know yeah, that. Yeah, we, we don't know that until we've driven the car. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I thought that, you know, shorty with the four star body, her shit was going to hit different than your body, only to realize that these real titties. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this pussy that might not be personally clipped actually hit different than Yo, this shit over here. Like, shit actually, though. this shit over here made me not even horny anymore because it's so <laughs> yeah. what I thought it was going to be. Like, this shit over here blew my mind because I didn't even expect it to be that way. I hopped over here and was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm lost in the sauce now, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not what I was expecting. I just came over for some fucking tea and crumpets Whoa. and a combo and we ended up fucking and now I'm in love. Yeah. Because now it's it was pussy good. The way you embrace me, everything. I didn't came over here and fuck with this Ferrari. And these <laughs> people got me feeling like I never want to shop in this place again. You know what I'm saying? Right. This upscale ass place. Like that's how niggas feel. Like it wasn't. It wasn't comfy. These yeah. people didn't uh, ask me if I liked anything. They just hurry up and buy. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's sometimes what the sex is. What it's like. A lot of these women, y'all are so bad. The Lori Harveys and all them. Like, 
as much as she's cutting dudes off with her next dudes, I don't see dudes fighting and scraping and screaming to stay because there, there has to be something off here. Mm. Right? I didn't see Michael B. Jordan do all the rollouts. I didn't see that, right? Mm. I didn't see that, right? I didn't see that. So it got to make you wonder that, yeah, he might have lost the status symbol like a nigga might give away the Ferrari and go get the Prius. But once you trade in, you got to deal with that. You know, okay, I'm driving the Prius, but hey. I'm still me, though. I'm still me. That's the Because at the end of the day, you know, a woman can be who she is, but she ain't nobody. And I want to say she's nobody, but she's not the same. She's not the same without 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 that that masculine to back it up. A man can go get a five and still be who he is. Damn, that's facts. Right? Like, it's the, yep. it's, it's the nigga in the car. It's not the car. Let's get that established. Facts. Right? Like, it just is what it is. Sure, like, See, either you're rude or you're not. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the, that's the real, the fabric is the fabric. Like, it don't matter what it is. Like, there's fiats were real suede in it, too. Right? <laughs> yo, there's, there's, I seen, I seen the Honda, I seen the Honda, did you see, yo, I seen the Honda, it had full everything inside. I said, God damn, I, it was, and I'm like, yo, it's a fact like that. Like, yeah, 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 I mean, at the end of the day, like, yeah, you, you, your, your engine costs a little more, but, you know, the real reality is it suit their cars to go faster than mm -hmm. Man, bro, the, te the Tesla right. right now, the Tesla right now is smacking these whips. Fifty thousand dollars I have you beating a Ferrari, right? Imagine that. So yeah, you know, no maintenance, no no maintenance, no 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 uh, crazy gas prices. You you <coughs> just you know you just get in and go, and, and you, you don't even know. gotta warm up the car. Literally, just get in and, and you just can go. look up and still see the stars. Mm. Right. So at the end of the day, that's how men are equal in this shit. Am I still being able to do what I do? and feel how I feel when I'm driving in this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And what woman's going to be okay with riding in that? Because she knows what it is. These women that are Ferraris are just for show. Well, I mean, I we need to have the woman that it don't even matter what whip we driving in as long as she's sitting next to you. Yeah. Well, it's gonna, I feel like it's going to get that way, though. I feel like we're, we're gonna, well, I know it's gonna get that way because it was gonna get it was if COVID was still been on, we we wouldn't even be in this whole feminist talk. We mm -hmm. wouldn't we wouldn't be. We wouldn't be, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because COVID showed us that everybody needed somebody. Mm. Everybody needed somebody. I appreciate you, bro, uh, for sitting down, dog. You know, this was a really good conversation. Um, I really enjoyed this one, and uh, I'm excited to put this out. I'm excited for everybody to check it out. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about, you know, all these different things. We we, we went through a lot of different, like, topics. We did, we did. Um, and there's some game in there, man. There's, you know. There's a lot of game. Fast forward, we want some of it. Watch it back, man. Right. Um, Save it. Listen save to it, it in the morning. Share all it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think I think we both speak for for a lot of men because uh, it's not even about just being handsome. It's about working to, to get to what you want. You know, mm -hmm. so at the end of the day, men that are high value are not just high value because they got money. We're working towards purpose and what we want. Fact, right? As long as you're working towards what you want, you are a high value man and woman, and being honest about what it takes to get to what you want. So, yeah, I think that that was a super dope podcast. Amen. Yeah. Shake it hard.